and welcome back to the Tomarosa. Uh, we recorded this morning's milking. That's us saying hello. And uh, now we're going to provide some commentary. This is this morning's milking in real time and mostly uncut, not intentionally cut. So first in we have Daisy. We pretty much bring the cows in in the same order that they calve in the spring. So Daisy's always first. Put the towel down there to try and keep things dry because it's so cold we don't want to use water. Just rubbing off any of the loose wood shavings from their bedding. Getting their udder clean. Don't want anything getting sucked into the, the milking system there. She's got her head down in the manger up forward there because we feed alfalfa pellets in the parlor. So now we're pre-dipping. It's an iodine based sanitizer. Got my strip cup and a towel. Strip a few streams of milk out of each teat just to examine it and make sure everything looks okay. That cup has a, a black fine mesh screen in it so if there's any clumps or anything it'll catch it and you can look. And then we dry everything off, make sure the teats are nice and clean and dry. Making sure that the, the very ends of the teats are clean, they're easy to miss. One towel per cow. We don't reuse towels on other cows. And then it's time to put the milking machine on. We use a new pulse milker. Has the pulsator built right into the claw. I like them. And now I'm going to have to come up with something to ramble on about because Daisy, she gives the most milk, but she's kind of a slow milker. So, yep, might as well post up. I'm going to be here for a while. You know, every cow is different. You know, they all milk out differently. You know, you all have to adjust how the claw hangs on the udder. They all have their unique attributes but they're all great milk cows I love them all they all have their own personalities and uh, Daisy you know she's a little slow she's had some some rough patches in her past but she's a sweet milk cow I love her you may notice that we have two stalls in our milking parlor but we're only milking one cow right now and we have more than one cow and the reason being is we're milking four right now but for me any time gained by milking two at a time in the parlor would be lost by having to wash two milking machines so we only do one at a time uh, the plan is this winter after the dry period we are going to put in a milking pipeline and it'll always be set up for two cows so we'll definitely be using both stalls oh that cup of extra pellets that's second breakfast so we give the cows a little bit of alfalfa pellets and then for some reason I started giving them a little more and, and now they come to expect it so now I have to divide the pellets up into two servings because they all want their second breakfast and they'll get all antsy while they're waiting for that second cup but when they're done they don't expect a third they know they're done so it's just it's funny it's my own fault. I've trained them that way. But the alfalfa pellets, they're, you know, they don't, they don't serve a huge nutritional need, uh, but they are certainly an incentive to get the, them to come into the parlor. Um, the only problem now is getting them to go out of the parlor. And uh, you'll see that when Daisy's eventually done. So how do I know when Daisy's done? Well, the milk will stop flowing. I mean, you don't want to leave the machine on too long, of course, because that can actually damage the udder. So um, I would say when, when the milk is mostly done flowing, there might be a little bit of a trickle. Um, but uh, again, the different cows are different. You know, she kind of tapers off. You know, her half-sister Buttercup, when she's done, she's done. It'll, she goes from full flow to nothing. So, and 
and still we wait. She is a slow milker. You can see the blue milk hose though bouncing with every pulsation. There's still some good milk flowing through there. I'm trying to figure out how long I've talked because she's such a, she is the longest cow milking. I'm just trying to, to drag this out now, taking you along with me. It's less boring for me in the parlor there because I do have a radio playing, listening to some good music, so it's not totally boring. And I think the cows like the music. Studies say they do. While I may zone out for part of the time, I'm not wasting all this time uh, totally. Uh, one of the reasons that we really like the side opener parlors is we can see the whole cow. Uh, not just uh, teats and feet, as they say. So I am looking over the cow, making sure everything looks right. And usually, because you know we milk first thing in the morning, if there is something going on with the cow, uh, we'll notice it in the milking parlor first. So uh, there she is. She's done with her pellets, but she's a good girl. She'll stand there patiently till we're done. She coughs. It's not on camera. But uh, when Daisy coughs, sometimes she pees a little. It's not her fault. The cows are actually all really good though. They don't make a mess in the parlor typically. We've trained them. And so that helps the parlor stay clean. Really, we put the rag underneath to catch the drips from the teat dip uh, in the winter time here. And then we just sweep it when we're done and the parlor stays really clean even though we're not washing it down with water in the winter. Yeah, she's got to be almost done by now. Yeah. Take the machine off, kind of drain the hose. So I'm going to put the claw into the red bucket that is filled with sanitizer. Now we do sanitize the claw between cows. Uh, we dip her teats again. Uh, we use the same teat dip. It's designed as both a pre and post dip. And it just stays on the teat. And just now we got to get her out. Daisy loves to come in first. She hates to leave. You know, she's only, she's like a tank. Virginia came in from the barn to, to help out. She, she takes her sweet time. If we had food ready in the barn, I think that'd be more of an incentive for them to leave. Maybe we'll try that system. Um, we can set up the, the back pad of our barn so we actually have a, a separate holding area. Um, but since we only milk with four cows right now, we don't even do that. It's literally just like a big circle. You know, they come into the parlor from the main area and they go back out to the main area. So there she is. That rope is uh, how I open and close the exit door. Refill the pellets, both the main cup and then uh, the second breakfast cup, because they've all come to expect it now. So I got the stall all set up for the next cow. Now I need to take care of the milk. We weigh every cow so we can keep track of production. And then we write it on our little sheet. And then we pack it to the milk house. This step will uh, will disappear when we have the pipeline because it will be piped directly into the tank. So I'm pouring it in the top of the tank now. There's actually a strainer with a milk filter in the top. And just in case anything gets by me, it won't get by the filter. But we try really hard to uh, make sure the udder is clean and, and strive for good clean milk. That's important to us. We drink it too. Lid back on. So now I'm taking the claw out of the sanitizer. The green bucket is just fresh water. Rinse, turn the vacuum back on. And now we're ready for the next cow. 
next one will be rows. Again, they, they all can come in in the same order that they have pretty much. Rose is a wonderful milk cow. We call her rock solid rose. Same procedures as with Daisy. You gotta clean the udder. They get all the wood shavings from the, the bedded pack on there. So make sure any loose shavings are brushed off. Dip, strip, and then we wipe them clean. They're almost clean, I swear. Again, we, we try and do a really good job. All right, good enough. So now we put the milker on. And uh, Rose, Rose is a fast milker. When uh, she lets down her milk, it, it really flows. So why, why do we call Rose Rock Solid Rose? Well, for the first thing, she's a pretty cow. Um, she actually adorns our milk bottles, our logo. Um, but she is really very steady on her production. Her, her production doesn't swing up or down too much. She's through her entire lactation, she's very consistent. Uh, she's an excellent mother. She's excellent at calving. Uh, the last two times she's calved, have been very quick and no problems and actually she likes to calve out on pasture so we'll have to keep an eye on her in binoculars but, but we'll check her and she'll be up grazing and then she's a fast eater too so she's already ready for a second but anyway you know we'll be watching when it's close to calving time and uh, everything will look fine and then you'll you'll look like a half hour later in binoculars and, and she'll be cleaning off the calf she is fast and again she's she's a wonderful mother she's very protective of her calf and she's just all around good milk cow look at that milk hose bounce I mean she is letting the milk down so Daisy's Utter, the, the first cow, you know, is, is pretty square, stocky, everything is, you know, well-placed teats. Rose, her udder, her back two teats are actually really close together, which she's such an awesome cow otherwise, you don't mind that, but it does take uh, some attention because um, you can practically dip both rear teats at the same time with the cup. They are, they are literally right next to each other, but... Uh, We've never had any utter health issues with her or anything like that. I mean, again, rock solid, good butter fat, good solids, non-fat. She's always been a low SCC cow, which SCC is somatic cell count. It's uh, the leukocytes in the milk, and it's an indicator of if there's an infection in the udder. Wow, look at her. She's done already. Um, so she, she's always had very excellent udder health, and all around just... An awesome cow. Into the sanitizer, the clog goes. I mean, she hasn't even finished eating yet. She's pretty much done. She's just looking at clean. She's like, fine, I'll be done. Gotta lick her, lick her lips. Tasty alfalfa. So one, one issue we do have with the, uh, the exit door and not separating them off into a holding area is sometimes, especially Buttercup, you'll see the open exit door and you want to stick her head in and see what's going on, see if she can get some food. But what that means is she's blocking the door and the cows don't want to leave. 
but that's okay because Buttercup's coming in next. So we have alfalfa pellets in that big black uh, can there, and in the little white bucket right next to it is actually aloe pellets, A-L-O-E, aloe, like aloe vera. And we use that occasionally as one of our treatments. It's a good immune system booster. So for example, around New Year's when we knew it was gonna get really cold, uh, we hit 16 below. Uh, we gave a little bit of aloe pellets as the second breakfast uh, for a few days before that, just to help give them a boost and, and get them ready. And we use it for any other times we make you know, significant changes, such as weaning and dry off and stuff like that. So uh, we find it to be a pretty effective management tool uh, in the parlor. And so that's what that little white bucket is. machine all ready for I don't have a rope yet to open the entrance door it's on the list though there she comes so buttercup is a good milk cow of course they're all good milk cows right uh, she's probably got the biggest butter and she's got really long teats. She would make a great cow for hand milking. Um, but she does good. But one of her uh, peculiar issues she has is she is actually allergic to her own milk. Uh, specifically the casein protein in her milk. And so what happens is if there's ever excess pressure in her udder, for example, uh, during weaning or dry off, uh, that casein protein is forced into the blood, her blood, and she has an allergic reaction. She gets all puffy around the eyes and she breaks out in hives and she just looks miserable. And it, it doesn't typically last very long. You know, you milk her out, it goes away. Um, and then it, it's usually just like a one time thing. Like after that one outbreak, you know, she's good. So. For, for dry off, which is coming up for us here in less than a month as a seasonal dairy, we dry off everybody at the same time. It is something that we have to be cognizant of. Um, unfortunately, at dry off, you can't relieve it by milking out because that would defeat the purpose. Uh, you want to stop milking them so their body feels that pressure and stops producing the milk. And so one of the treatments we use is a, a homeopathic a remedy called Apis Mel. And it is actually made from the uh, venom of bees, so bee venom. And we give her Apis Mel a little bit beforehand and that prevents her from having that allergic reaction. But, you know, we love Buttercup and, you know, it's, it's a peculiar condition. It doesn't happen very often, and uh, from our research, it seems to happen more so in uh, jerseys than any other breed. Um, our local veterinarians uh, hadn't really heard of it, but we, we talked to some uh, older uh, veterinarians who've been around for a long time, and they were able to uh, explain more to us. And they're actually the ones that recommended the Apis Mel. And so we're very uh, grateful for their many years of experience because we don't want to see Buttercup suffer. So pretty much twice a year we have to deal with it. I'd say weaning and uh, dry off. So like I mentioned at the very beginning, when, uh, when Buttercup milks out, she pretty much uh, she goes from uh, full steam ahead to all stop. So the milk will be flowing and then it just won't. And we take the machine off. Now she can be a bit of a struggle when we're uh, when we're still have the calves on the cows because 
she's smart and she's like, I want to give all my milk to my baby. So she can be a little bit of a struggle sometimes to get her milk to let down. And it's typically towards the end of when we have the calves on the cows, when the calves I think are drinking the most. And she's super friendly. She is our friendliest cow. Uh, it is amazing their personality. She's super friendly. She always wants attention. She'll come up to you if you're in the barnyard, always wanting, you know, ear scratches and, and you know, being petted and everything. Where Carnation, the next cow, is the most standoffish. Um, no problems dealing with her in the parlor, but you know, she's not a big fan of uh, attention. Buttercup also has figured out how to scratch uh, behind her ears using the handles for the milking parlor gates. So she'll let down and it'll be full flow and then she'll just stop. But on her uh, rear left quarter, because the cup, the udder is actually four separate quarters. It's like four separate compartments. It's not all interconnected. Um, sometimes that'll have a little extra milk left in it at the end. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm just putting my hand on it. I'm just providing just a few ounces more weight on that corner of the milking machine. And that just strips the rest of the milk out of her really quick. And then she'll be done. And there we go. Buttercup, uh, like her half-sister Daisy, is also a little reluctant to leave the milking parlor, unless there's food involved. See, you thought she was gonna go for it, didn't you? You saw her get ready to leave, you're like, oh, she's gonna leave. No. Virginia's there calling, too. So when Virginia's working out in the barn, when the exit door opens, she'll usually call the cow. And that does help them. They all know their names. They all come when called. And so that's pretty handy. She almost made it through the door, her, her hips not letting it close there we go you ready for the last cow carnation so when we do put in our pipeline having the individual cow production records is still very important to us so we are going to have milk meters on every milk machine because um, on farms that don't have meters they they say that you know the pipeline is the cow's best friend because you don't really know what they're making but we, we really enjoy having that knowledge so we will continue to individually track each cow's production and in three, two, one. Ooh, what happened there? So while I was in the milk house, evidently the camera shut itself off and I didn't realize it until I'd already put the machine on Carnation here, which you've already seen me put the machine on three times. So I'm sure you got the picture by now. But uh, I managed to notice the, uh, the camera had shut off and turn it back on. Uh, I think it just times out after a while. But uh, Carnation is our fourth and last cow of the day. And her udder is, it's pretty small looking, like from the outside. Uh, she almost looks, so she, she, this is her second lactation, but she almost looks like she has like a, a first calf heifer udder. Uh, it's pretty kind of high and tight. But uh, she still does a good amount of production, so it's just one of those one of those things. Um, she is, like I said, the most standoffish cow. But you know, they all behave themselves in the parlor, so that's what's most important. She is also a long cow, 
And, and what I mean is the stalls are eight feet long and she's the only one where with her head in the manger, her tail is up against that exit gate or the entrance gate. And she just, she, she fills the space. So Carnation, um, she is half sister to Rose. And so she actually milks out pretty quick as well. Um, if you notice, both Carnation and Rose have white markings on them, and they are half-sisters, so I like white markings on jerseys, and uh, Buttercup and Daisy are both solid-colored cows, and they're half-sisters, so easy to tell apart. Carnation's very attentive, though. She's like I said, she's standoffish and she, she's pretty alert too. She's like, what is going on? For Carnation, for the way her udder is, I kind of have to keep the machine pulled forward a little bit because her front two teats are higher than her back two teats. As I mentioned earlier, we don't have a rope on the entrance door yet. And uh, one of the reasons is we actually have to keep it locked uh, between cows because Carnation will let herself into the parlor. She will use her head and she will push that door open and barge right in uh, unless we keep the door locked. And so uh, when we do put a, a rope on, I'll have to have a, a weight on the other side to keep it closed as well. But uh, she, she has gotten pretty good at just letting herself in. And, she knows she she can hear like when I put the the lid on the bucket and, and get it all ready. She knows that it's ready for the next cow, and so she'll time it. She is a smart cow, almost too smart for her own good. But she's the last cow, and, and she has no problem leaving either. When uh, when she's done, she's done, and there she goes. At least as fast as a cow would typically go. So since she's the last one out, Virginia's up there by the door. She's resetting the gates for the barn. And then I'm weighing the milk. And for those interested how much milk we're getting right now, we're about a month before we dry off. So we're pretty close to the end of lactation. We've already changed their feed to try and start reducing production, but I would say we're averaging about 20 pounds a day per cow, um, which I think is actually really good considering they're milked only once a day, they're 100% grass fed, there's no grain or other concentrates. And so we're very happy with that production at this stage. And then uh, there's me taking the milk in to, to dump the last bit into the bulk tank. And so I think we're about done here. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, narrated journey uh, along the, uh, the milking routine. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Tomarosa. Thanks for joining. Oh, don't want to forget the camera. Bye.